What's up guys, how are you today? Let's talk about multiple myeloma diagnosis and treatment because in the previous video we have talked about multiple myeloma so let's get started. That was the previous video, another reason that you should subscribe and you should watch this previous video before this one because you'll never understand anything. Here are the answers to the questions of last time's most common symptom in multiple myeloma is bone pain, second most common clinical problem is infections, the most common infections in multiple myelomas are pneumonias and pyelonephritis, the most frequent infectious pathogens in multiple myeloma are strep pneumo, klebsiella, staph aureus and e. coli, most frequent infectious pathogens to cause urine tract infection in multiple myeloma is e. coli, plasma cell of ALK phosphatase in multiple myeloma is normal, the nine gap in multiple myeloma is usually low. For the 15,000 times, plasma cell is a problem with B lymphocytes which is of the lymphoid lineage of the hematopoietic stem cells. Normally, normally you have some free light chains in the urine, but they are less than 10 milligrams. In multiple myeloma, however, they are more than 10 milligrams per day, and we call them Benz Jones protein. Not detected by urine dipstick, but they can be detected using electrophoresis and immunoelectrophoresis to be specific. We have talked about electrophoresis before, but for now, don't forget, multiple myeloma has the M spike on the gamma globulin portion. The M spike, also known as M component on electrophoresis in multiple myeloma, looks like this, but we cannot tell which type of immunoglobulin is high from the electrophoresis. Now we need an immunoelectrophoresis with immunofixation. This is how you diagnose multiple myeloma. You start with electrophoresis, you have monoclonal gammopathy. Then you do the immunofixation or immunoelectrophoresis, and you end up with IgG kappa monoclonal protein. This is how to diagnose multiple myeloma, but this is not how to confirm the diagnosis. To confirm the diagnosis, you will need a bone marrow biopsy. I've talked about these topics before, so I'm not going to waste time here today. Please take a quick look, and also here. The definition of multiple myeloma is that we have increase in single immunoglobulin and its corresponding light chain, so it's a B cell neoplasm. The summary of multiple myeloma from the previous lecture, median age is 70. Crab is an evident of end organ dysfunction, and we suspect multiple myeloma when we have these things. So how to diagnose multiple myeloma? Clinically and some labs. So let's first start with clinically. You have a patient with bone pain, you touch the bone, they are tender. Sometimes there is a bone mass. Yes, indeed, it happens. Where is the bone pain? Back, ribs, skull, sternum. The back is the most common one. Also, pathological fractures because multiple myeloma is making his or her bones weak, but usually his bones because it's commoner in males. Kidney problems such as nephrotic syndrome, why? We have amyloidosis. What are the symptoms of nephrotic syndrome? Some of them are edema and xanthoma due to hyperlipidemia. Renal failure, what are the clinical picture of renal failure? You have a yellow patient who is pale. Sometimes there is pericarditis called uremic pericarditis. So the patient will be leaning forward because when he tries to lay back on his back in bed, it stretches the pericardium causing pain. So the patient will be leaning forward. You will hear a triphasic friction rub over the precordium. Pericarditis can lead to cardiac tamponade, leading to increased jugular venous pressure and pulsus paradoxus. Brown line pigment in nails is common in renal failure patients. Easy bruising, again because of uremia. Neuropathy, metabolic acidosis. The patient will be breathing fast and deep. Let's go to the eye. You have bruising around the eye and the retina has bleeding. The retinal vessels are engorged. Why do you think that there is a problem with that? Why do you think this happens? The answer is hyperviscosity syndrome. Hematological findings, pale patient, tired patient. Why? Because of any bruising. Why? Because the platelets uh, cannot adhere to the endothelium because of the amyloidosis. Also, the M component interacts with platelets so that they can aggregate and activate. Headache and visual disturbance. Why? Because of hyperviscosity. CNS, headache, blurry vision, vertigo due to hyperviscosity, lethargy and confusion due to hypercalcemia. Why do we have hypercalcemia? Because we have bone destruction. Cerebral ischemia, loss of bowel and bladder control. Why? 
because of a radiculopathy or a spinal cord compression. Extra dural mass, same thing, the vertebra compress over each other, causing fractures and radiculopathy, and you can end up with an extra dural mass. Carpal tunnel syndrome because of the amyloidosis depositing into soft tissue. Now we are done with clinical, let's go to the lab. We have four different categories. We have blood tests, urine tests, radiology, and histopathology. Blood tests such as ESR, CBC with peripheral smear, CMP electrolytes, uric acid, and you have serum protein electrophoresis, immunoelectrophoresis with immunofixation, serum viscosity, serum alkaline phosphatase, beta-2 microglobulin, plasma immunoglobulin level, and plasma protein level. Let's go to the urine. Urinalysis or dipstick is useless, okay, so it's not going to diagnose multiple myeloma, but it's like an easy test, so you can do it to rule out other things, because we do not know yet if this patient has multiple myeloma or not. Urine protein electrophoresis, urine immunoelectrophoresis with immunofixation, kidney function tests such as blood urea, nitrogen, creatinine, electrolytes, uric acid in the urine. Radiology, we need plain x-ray, MRI, nuclear bone scan is useless in multiple myeloma. Histopathology, bone marrow biopsy, also known as bone marrow aspirate. And we need histology, like histopathology, and immunohistochemistry. So we'll take a look under the microscope, and we will stain them, okay, with those immunoisotopes or whatever. So first, let's start with blood tests. How about the ESR? It's high. Why? Because paraproteins are nasty and they are everywhere, leading to rolo formation, which means that red blood cells are clumped together. When they clump together, they sink together quickly. Birds with feather flock together. They clump and sink, leading to increased erythrocyte sedimentation rate. How about the peripheral smear? You will see rolo formation. How about the CBC with other erythrocyte indices? We have normocytic normochromic anemia. MCV is normal. Red blood cell count is usually low. CMP and electrolytes, high calcium, high creatinine, high uric acid. Why high calcium? Because of bone destruction. Why high creatinine? Because of renal failure. On serum protein electrophoresis, we have M spike. Immunoelectrophoresis can tell us which subtype of them. Usually it's IgG. Relative serum viscosity. So, normal relative serum viscosity is 1.8, very close to 2, where I grow up. So, plasma has double the viscosity of water. This is the relative viscosity. In multiple myeloma, the plasma is very viscous. The viscosity is high. Why is that? Because of the hyperviscosity syndrome. These paraproteins are nasty and they are everywhere. Serum alkaline phosphatase is normal. Why? Because osteoblasts were not activated, only osteoclasts. Contrast that with Paget's disease where ALP was high because osteoblasts were activated first before activating the osteoclast. Beta-2 microglobulin level. The higher the level, the worse the prognosis. So beta-2 microglobulin has a prognosticator value or it's like a not prognosticator, so it has a prognostic value. Okay, albumin level, the lower the albumin, the worse the prognosis. So albumin level is opposite to beta-2 microglobulin. The higher the beta-2 microglobulin, and the lower the albumin, the worse the prognosis. Second on the list is urine tests. Urine protein electrophoresis, it will have the quantity of Benz jones proteins for you. Benz jones are the light chains but it will not tell you the quality. It will not tell you which one is which. Is it kappa or lambda? You have no idea. That's why we need urine immunoelectrophoresis or immunofixation. It's qualitative. It tells you the type of Benz jones proteins. Urine analysis or dipstick is useless, again, because it only detects albumin. And in multiple myeloma, we have a problem with globulins, called gamma globulins, and not albumin. Very nice. Kidney function tests. BUN is high, creatinine is high, uric acid is high. Why? Because your kidney is failing. Third, radiology. Plain x-ray. We have multiple punched athletic lesions in the back, in the skull, whatever. These can be palpable. Okay, palpable, of course, on physical exam. Okay, do not palpate the x-ray. Okay, don't be one of these people. Cool, nuclear bone scan is useless. Again, MRI, why? Because it will detect radiculopathy. MRI is the best for when it comes to the brain, the nerves, stuff like that. 
So radiculopathy, bone compression of the spinal cord and the spinal nerve roots will be evident on MRI. You may need EMG to diagnose carpal tunnel syndrome, but EMG is not radiology, but I just like put it here anyways. Let's go to the histopathology. We need a bone marrow biopsy. If we have clonal plasma cells greater than 10% of the whole bone marrow, this is multiple myeloma. Cool. Um, so, describe the plasma cells under the microscope. They have clock face chromatin, abundant rough endoplasmic reticulum, prominent Golgi. Why both of these? Because they will produce lots of proteins because the immunoglobulins, they end in IN, so they are proteins. So, if we are going to produce lots of proteins, we need lots of RER and Golgi. Dark blue cytoplasm, peripheral nucleus with a perinuclear halo. This white rim is called the perinuclear halo. Very nice. And sometimes they have vacuoles in the cytoplasm. These vacuoles are full of immunoglobulins. Now, immunohistochemistry, these plasma cells are CD138 positive. International staging system for multiple myeloma. If you are a medical student, you don't have to waste your time here. But if you are like a resident or a professional oncologist, yeah, please go ahead and memorize all of these. So stage one, two, three, beta two microglobulin. The higher, the worse the prognosis, albumin. The lower the albumin, the worse the prognosis. So they are opposite. Criteria of diagnosis of multiple myeloma. To diagnose multiple myeloma, both one and two must be present. What is one? Plasma cells greater than 10%. And what is two? Any one of the following myeloma defining events, such as evidence of end organ damage, crap. So what's the C? Calcium greater than 11. What's the R? Renal failure, so serum creatinine greater than two. Anemia, hemoglobin less than 10. And B is bone lesions, one or more, more bone lesions on x-ray. Any one of the following biomarkers of cancer, plasma cell greater than 60%. Serum light chain greater than 100 milligrams per deciliter, and more than one focal lesions on MRI. Treating of multiple myeloma. When to start treatment? When you have end organ damage, and when you have M component more than five. High dose chemo is the first step. Immunomodulators such as thalidomide, lenalidomide, proteasome inhibitors such as bortezomib. Um, What's the mechanism of action of these? They cause cell cycle arrest, leading to death of myeloma cells. We add steroids, specifically dexamethasone. By the way, there's a very famous story of thalidomide. Make sure to Google it. It's fascinating. Autologous stem cell transplant for younger patients. Dramatically improved survival. Palliative care for the elderly using alkylating agents such as mulfalin and cyclophosphamide. We add prednisone to it. So... In palliative care, the steroid of choice is prednisone. In high-dose chemo, the steroid of choice is dexamethasone. Plasma cytomas are local. You can radiate them. How to treat primary amyloidosis and multiple myeloma? When you treat multiple myeloma, usually it goes away. Other options are TNF inhibitors, hematopoietic stem cell transplant, and dialysis. Question of the day. What are the different types of proteinuria that you know? And which one includes multiple myeloma? Let me know in the comments, please. Now you can have access to these notes that I'm writing right now on Patreon. Go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. This is Medicosis Perfectionalist. Be safe, stay happy, and study hard. Drive sober or get pulled over. What does that have to do with multiple myeloma? Nothing. I just want to say it. Okay. See you next time.